Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk uh, about uh, Shop Invader. Um, so, a quick reminder of uh, who I am. I'm Sébastien Beau. I'm co founder and CEO of uh, Accretion Funds. I'm one of the initial contributors of, on the connector of Magento and then on the connector with uh, PrestaShop. And I am also the creator of Shop Invader, um, which I'm going to, to present today. Uh, so uh, what we what well, what we are going to talk about this talk is first we are going to have a quick reminder of what is Shop Invader. So for for new uh, newcomer, you can understand what uh, what it is. Um, then we will um, explain who are the new contributors on the project, uh, what are the new features that we have uh, that have been developed uh, this year. Um, then we will talk about uh, related. A shop Invader project. So I'm going to present you some other project linked to, um, to, to, to Shop Invader um, pro project. I'm going to share you some tips. Um, then I'm going to give you the roadmap of the, um, of the project for, for the next year, for the version for, for 14. And then we're going to, to see, uh, but I'm going to tell you that there is other talk on, uh, on Shop Invader. So, um, First, what is Shop Invader? So this is an open, full open source solution, a high commerce solution for Do. We have a native and a support of Varnish, so you can uh, reach, uh, we really, can do big projects with this, and uh, we'll have really great uh, performance. Um, we are by default integrated uh, with Elastic and Algolia, so you really need to use a, a, a search engine for, for your project. You can not do the project without the search engine, so you have to integrate uh, it by default. So there is a lot of advantage for of this, for the faceting, for the performance, for a lot of um, um, really interesting points. Uh, we, uh, we try to, uh, and we, we succeed, to, to have a stable, REST API between the different version of Odoo. So I'm going to remind how, what is the architecture of the project, but the main point is that Odoo provides the REST API and then you will use it. And the main point is keeping this REST API compatible between all version of Odoo. So you, if you migrate to Odoo, you don't have to break, uh, redo uh, all of your website. Uh, and also we have a clean implementation for, for the CDN part. Um, so, just a reminder of the um, of the architecture. Uh, so, what we have is on the other side, we have the Shop Invader project, and Shop Invader project have um, several dependencies. The first dependency is the REST framework. It's an, an OCI project. For all of these dependencies are OCI project. So the REST framework. Um, gives the possibility to build REST API for Odoo. And we depend on this project. So the main idea is that Shop Invader, from all the Shop Invader module, all of the um, feature is developed on Odoo side. And when you want, if you want to have a, a new feature, for example, uh, I don't know, giving the possibility to the customer to, to post a, a PDF or stuff like that, then you just develop a module on Odoo side, create the REST API, and the e-commerce will use this API. So this is why we depend on this framework, is to be able to expose REST API for, um, for Modoo. Then we have the storage project. The storage project is a generic module that gives you the possibility to uh, store images, uh, PDF, or whatever data you want to, uh, to share publicly uh, into several uh, kind of um, storage. You can use Amazon, you can use uh, SFTP, you can use a, a local fighter, whatever you want. You can store your data, public, public data somewhere, and then you can expose it with a CDN or directly with Nginx or whatever you want. And so this is a brick to, to, to be able to manage this. All of these bricks can be reused in 
of our project. Um, then you have the search engine uh, project. The search engine project is to synchronize your product and your category into this search engine. So the main point is that we want to use the search engine for two things. First, for the search and this faceting. So if you go to your website, you can uh, uh, tick some option and then you have your, your if you search on the product, you have the, the result um, directly and um, in fast way. And also we use it as um, something like a cache database. If somebody go to your website and click on uh, on a product uh, on a product page, then the website will read the data into Elastic and not in Odoo. So the main point is avoiding doing too much requests uh, to Odoo. So what you have to keep in mind is that most of the code is on Odoo side. Then we just use locomotive CMS to create the design, the only the front parts of your site. And if you, for example, add a product into your cart, locomotive, the, your website will just request to do to add the product into the cart and Odoo will compute the, the sale order and stuff like that, compute the taxes, and then return you the, the result. So every write is done directly. Um, for the images and the product, local, the front will directly consume the CDN for the images, for the PDF, for the technical documentation or stuff like that. And for the, um, um, so for the search engine part, it will directly uh, request it to, to get the information for the product, for the category. So one thing that you have to keep in mind is that you have to see a shop invader project on Odoo side like an headless e-commerce uh, solution. So it's only uh, um, a lot of Python module that give e-commerce feature with a REST API. And then you can consume this REST API into locomotive, for example, for uh, building your, your website. So now, um, what is new on, on Shop Invader? Um, so the first thing is that we now have new contributor. And this is something for me really, really important because it's something to create a project and to, uh, to succeed, to, to, to have customer on this project and to, to project with, with this. But it's something else to have contributor and to have a, a really good contributor with a, a great experience. Um, and this is why I first want to thank uh, Camp to Camp and Forge Flow because they now uh, have started to have a, uh, they have done contribution on the, on the project and they have uh, done project with Shopping Rider. So this is something really, uh, really important uh, um, for, for me. Um, um, okay, I'm really, really happy to have them. Uh, um, on the, on the project. Now it's, it's not anymore a, a project um, between Accretion and Axon, but it's really a, it starts to be really a, a community project. Um, so regarding the new feature, what we have done the, um, this year, um, first thing we, Shop Invader have been migrating to, to version um, um, 13. Um, so we, we now support 10, 12, 13, and soon we, we will support 14. All of these versions have exactly the same REST API. So you can migrate to do and change nothing on your website and it's work. Um, we now have done some new module. So one of the module is um, a module that helps you to, uh, to, to manage your, your variants. So, for example, if you have several variants, some variant cannot, can be out of stock or stuff like that, or you cannot solve uh, some, some variants. And this module give, um, simplify the way to, um, to, um, to do the in your team um, when you 
you, you travel from host to host. Uh, you have one selector for selecting, for example, the size of the product, then the color of the product. This data are directly pushed into, um, into Elastic. And if you change one, uh, for example, if you change the color, it directly redirects to the, to the right variant and manage all of the incompatibility stuff. So just a model if you have, if you want to say uh, to, to, to manage variant, um, have a beautiful selector, you can install this module and it will make uh, your life really, really, really easy. Um, we also support whitelist, wishlist. Um, so if you're the customer want to, um, um, want to keep in, in mind the, the product you want to buy. So this, uh, the white list have been done by, by come to camp. Um, so it's a new module that you, you, you can use. Um, we also have some uh, feature for, for B2B case. It's, um, it's a customer validation process. So if you, if you have an e-commerce, which is more for B2B, uh, so if you want a company that registered to your website, then you check the information and then you accept it. It's something that you can do natively with Shop Invader. It's just an uh, option that you have to activate on your, um, on your back office. Um, we also uh, manage now the updates of old, old cart. Um, if a customer go to your website, uh, do a cart, and the next day it come back, but the promotion is uh, on your, for your prices, you have a 10% and it's finished. Um, before, if the customer co come back, the price was still the same until he do an action, for example, like adding a product or changing a quantity or selecting the um, um, a delivery address or stuff like that. But before he interact with the cart, the price was still the old version. So now you can update every night all the pending cart of your customer and refresh the price. So if you have a new promotion or a promotion that is not available anymore, the price will be changed in all cart, existing cart. We now also have, uh, we now support by default the integration with several environments. Uh, so this is something really important because if you go in production, you, you, can, you will have pre-production or test server, et cetera. So this is something really, really important. We are also have added the download of quotation, minor stuff, but it was something missing. We, we can also uh, now sell by packing. So imagine that you have product and you can uh, uh, sell it by uh, unity or by pack of 12 or pack of uh, one pallet. Uh, so it's more for B2B case. Um, if you, you sell product by pallet or, uh, or more, then the customer can select which packing he wants to buy. So I want to buy one unit or you want to, to buy two pallets or want to buy one, uh, one pack or two pack. So you can select all of this option. Um, this, also, uh, this also have been done by, by, by come to come. Um, we, um, we also have a, a multi-company, multi-customer user. So this is also for B2B feature. Um, Invite case is imagine that you have um, a big company uh, that uh, with one of your customers is a big company and you have one supervisor that, um, uh, that validates the purchase or, or supervise and many people who can buy in the company. Uh, in that case, you can send a QR code to, uh, to this company and every employee can register to the e-commerce, but all of this account will be linked to the company. So every employee can have an account on your website, but every purchase they do are linked to the account of the company. So this is something more in B2B, but it's something interesting because this kind of feature of a B2B feature, you don't have this kind of feature with Magento or PrestaShop. Uh, managing B2B with Magento or PrestaShop is really, really hard because it's not designed for this case. Odoo natively support this kind of workflow. So integrating them with Shop Invader is not something, uh, something hard. Um, 
for getting um, better um, uh, exp user experience. We now have a drag and drop for, um, if you want on your product, you can drag and drop images and then it add them directly. You don't need to, to do so many clicks to, to add an image. Um, we're also in, um, in, um, in storage uh, projects, which is OCA project. We uh, for so the, the image part is also in, in, in the OCA, it's in, also in storage product. Um, and in storage product, we now support every um, S3 like uh, storage. Um, initially, it was all we have some um, parameter that was uh, forced you to use Amazon S3, uh, S3. And now we um, you can you can use whatever uh, API which is compatible with uh, Amazon S3. Um, we also have done some improvements uh, for the integ for, of configuration with, uh, with Elasticsearch. So if you use Elasticsearch, the configuration will be, will be easier. Um, so now, what, what is my vision of Shop Invider, what we should do and what, where we are? Uh, the first thing is that I, I think we succeed to build an, an alternative to Magento. We, for sure, we miss some feature because Magento have a lot of module, but we can develop the missing feature really easily because Odoo is a really great framework for developing feature. So it's when a customer tells me, okay, I miss this feature, it's not a big issue because even in Magento, when you want to install a module, the community is, uh, not so well organized. And every time you integrate module, you have a lot of compatibility issues. So when you pay your module, it's not really working out of box. So you always spend time when you uh, just, you buy your module, but you spend time for int integration. On the other side, uh, with the strong OCI community, when we develop a module, we develop it once and it's compatible with everything. So it's fine. So developing the missing feature for me, is not an, an issue. And, with the huge committee we have, we can do it uh, all together and it, it will work. So we miss feature, but it's not an issue. And we, I think we also succeed to create a community around Shopping Vendor. So now it's Axon, Accretion, Come to Comp, for sure in this project. And it's not, uh, it's not um, a, co of a a project with only one contributor. Uh, we have really strong community that are uh, well known in, in the community. So I think for these two points, we, we succeed. So now we have to focus on some point, for example, where Magento is not really good. Uh, one, one point is the product management information, uh, information management. Uh, when, when you have, for example, a Magento or a Presta shop, um, if you have a huge catalog with a lot of products, really soon you are going to pay for uh, this kind of product, a PIM, uh, like Akeneo, which is really expensive. Uh, and you have to pay every year a license. So it's not so, it's kind of, it's expensive as, as product. Um, and we need to develop this in Odoo. And I will mean to show you what we have already started on this point. And if we succeed to have directly a PIM integrated with Odoo, then the customer will say, okay, I can use Shopping Vider with Odoo, or I have to Odoo, Magento, and then Akeneo. So it's better to only use Odoo with, with Shopping Vider. Um, we also need to improve and work more on the way to manage your catalog. So import, import, export of data. We must make this really, really, really easy. And we also have to think about um, a migration process to, uh, so I'm going to talk more about this, but the main point is that we have two things to do is finding solution, for example, for migrating uh, you're extracting your data from Magento or PrestaShop, and also uh, finding solution where you have um, a big, big project with, uh, I don't know, two, three, four websites, four existing websites, uh, uh, and you have to change 
the website and then the ERP and this uh, doing every change at the same time can be a, a little risky. So this is next step that we have to, to succeed. So it can be very easier for, for you to, um, to, to, uh, to have a successful uh, project. Um, so I'm going to present you some new uh, related project to Shopping Vider. The first one is the product information management. Uh, for this one, um, you should, there is a talk uh, done by Cedric uh, from Axon. Uh, I deeply recommend you to, uh, to see this talk. Um, so this talk uh, is about presenting you the alternative we have started to build, uh, which is an alternative to Akineo. Um, it's a project that I, I have in mind for a long time. Uh, we, um, I have done some, I think the first prototype was in OpenRP uh, version five, uh, when we start to manage um, the custom attribute and the attribute set, um, just to have what is an attribute set and what is custom attribute is, imagine that you, you sell a, a, a camera uh, or a fridge. In a camera, you want to, when the, your employee uh, fill the, the, the form of the product of a camera, you want them to put the number of pixels, put the, the size of the internal memory, um, some stuff like that, really specific to the, um, to the camera. And on the other hand, if you have cell fridge, you don't have the same field to, to fill. So this module is here to, uh, to, um, to manage this specific uh, case and also to centralize every feature you need for managing your catalog. So for example, having the mass edition, having the mass import, uh, the image management, your category management, everything is now centralized in your apps with a dependency of several modules that help you to, to manage your, your, your catalog. So I, I deeply recommend you to, uh, to, to, to see this, um, this, uh, this talk. Uh, then we have the um, import export. And this is um, uh, Odoo natively support import export with, with Excel or, or CSV file. But um, I think we can make something better. Uh, one stuff I, I want to improve is the way to import relation. Uh, right now, if you import relation, for example, if you import a, a mini to, to mini, uh, you have to put every field in the same colon uh, split by comma. Uh, this is not really easy for the end user to uh, fill this information with the comma. I can type this, type the word, um, do a, a wrong, wrong typing, and this will block your import. Um, also, there is the import of one too many. Uh, in native Odoo, if you want to import one too many, you have to split this in several lines. The main issue is that if you have a big file and then you start to sort, you mix everything and you and your import will not work. Uh, so the idea is to split this, uh, all of this in, uh, in column. Um, um, also, we want to, to provide you um, easily uh, templates for, uh, for importing. So you can configure an import, you generate a template, and then you can do your import. Um, have a better uh, error management. The main point is that when you do an import, um, I want to have zero uh, in my Excel file. So I put my ex an Excel file, if there is something wrong, I get back my Excel file with a colon that tell me, okay, on this line, you have an error, uh, the category is wrong, or the, uh, the, you missed to fill this, the, this field or stuff like that. Um, we also uh, want to support partial commits. Um, so the, main, the idea is that if you import a big, big file with uh, uh, 10,000 products, then if there is only one product that fail, you want to import everything, but not this product, and then you can re-import only this product. Um, also, we are working on automatic synchronization. This is more 
if you want to export your catalog to uh, um, to an external system like uh, a Google Shopping queue or stuff like that, and you want to export a CSV file uh, automatically. I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of what we, uh, we already have for this um, pattern uh, import export stuff and um, explain you more, uh, more about this. Uh, I'm going to do click because we don't have so many times. Uh, full screen, okay. Uh, so one thing that it's based on the ER export of Odoo and the OCM module, okay, you can add every field you want to, uh, to um, in your export, you can select uh, which field you want. And, and uh, for example, here yeah, I select the name, I select the catch with, with, the, with uh, the full name, uh, select the default code. And here I have some option, uh, it's add select tab. The idea is that I'm going to, um, here I can generate a pattern. So now I have a pattern file here. If I open this, you will understand what is the select tab. Edit. The select tab, oops, sorry. So here I have my, um, oops. I have my Excel file, which is a template with the name, the category, the, the category and uh, there's a category and the default code. I have something, okay. Um, I can zoom on this, it will be better. Okay, so I have the name, the category and the default code. As I have ticked this option, it's, I've exported to me all of the category I have in my, in my uh, database. And then here I can just select my category. So instead of of typing by myself the name of, um, of the category and doing some uh, mistake, I can just select the data like this. Then I can put whatever I want as name, um, uh, foo one, um, foo two, um, foo three, foo four. Uh, I can also put a uh, default code, so I'm going to put one, uh, two, three, four, um, and I can save it. Okay, and now I can import. Give this one. I didn't import the right one. Sorry. It's this one. So I can import it. And then I see here my pending or failing um, import. So I can, I think I won if that I've succeeded. So now I, I it showed me that four records have been created. In case of error, I have uh, um, information about the, the error. Um, Stuff that I can do is, oops, sorry. Uh, stuff that I can do is that, for example, if I want to re-import my data, I can say that this, the code, is the key for the import. And if I generate again a pattern, you will see that now, Sorry, uh, I have a little change here in my file. And it have added default code, um, hashtag key. So this means that when I import this file, it will match the default code as an external key. And if you want, you can uh, match several uh, key for your import for, for matching a, a product or category, whatever you want. So the idea is that with that module, you can select whatever key you want. You don't need to have external key uh, for importing. And, the, uh, and I think this is something important because if uh, in my catalog, I by myself, I add a new product and the product was existing in my database. 
If I match on the default code, it will match it and not create a duplicate product. Uh, because exporting for updating is not something really easy. So you can configure here your, your key. And also something that you can do uh, in case, I didn't install the module here, but in case you want to export, for example, uh, um, import, export, a mini to mini, you can, the syntax um, is something like this. Oh, sorry. An issue. Okay. Okay. Uh, the syntax is, for example, if you want to import categories, uh, you can do uh, something like this, complete, complete name. And I can import um, many to many, oops, sorry, by adding several columns. And uh, so you can import, for example, the, the first category, the second category, and uh, add a selector like I have done before. This, uh, this you can do it also uh, by adding here the categories, but I missed to install the module. So I can add the cat a many to many fields, and then it will ask me, for example, also to add the select tab uh, and do exactly the same thing. Uh, and in case that I have, uh, I'm going to uh, do something, add an error. So I'm going to put uh, something bad here. Like value. Yes. I want to force any value value. So I'm going to remove the constant from my condition. Uh, Uh, I'm going to put a false or fake. So I'm going here to put you um, an invalid data. It's a category that do not exist on. Okay, I'm going to put star. I've done something wrong. Okay, well, I'm going to put a zero. It should, uh, should work. So if now I import this file, uh, my job has failed. And if I download this, this is a file. I now have an error and it tell me that uh, this, uh, this is not uh, a valid um, information. So all of your errors are, are raised here. Um, well, Sebastian, what I generally say is if in a live demo, you get an error, that's a successful demo. That yeah. tells you we are not making things up. It's real. It's live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I'm just conscious of time at yeah. the moment. I'm going to do a really quickly for the end. Go ahead. So, uh, so quickly, we have also started another project. I'm not going to do your demo, but you can take a look on this. The main idea is that in case of migration and that you have a customer, we have already existing, for example, free commerce website and you want to migrate to Odoo and you don't want to waste time on the connection, then this module is just a simple REST API that allow you to push in one call a set order with all customer information. We do it because we have a, a big customer that wants to migrate to Shopping Invader, but we cannot switch all, all of the website at the same time. So it will first do a simple, really simple connection to do, and then we'll switch to, um, to Shop Invader. Uh, also, a quick Shop Invader tips. Be careful with Algola pricing. Uh, price depends on number of read, write you do. Uh, if you, um, it depends also on the number of items you have in your index and also the sorting key. Uh, if you have several sorting keys, for example, I want to sort my product by price, by uh, review, uh, every time you need to create a new index, so the price will raise a lot. And also you have technical limitation for 10 uh, kilobytes. So just be careful with this. For the roadmap, um, what we are going to do in 14, we are going to refactor um, the new, um, based on the refactor shopping right off on the new REST framework. It will not change the API compatibility, but just code refactor. 
We're going to extract the binding and the channel uh, concept into a generic module. So we already have started. We will focus on more PIM feature. Um, we're going to think about doing uh, import export plug to a new, a new office. I don't know if you know a new office, but it's something really interesting. Uh, we're going to support booking. So on your drive, for when you finish your order, you can uh, select uh, a time for your, your delivery. Uh, we've we are thinking about doing a locust integration because we are starting project with more than one, um, one thousand between one and two thousand other products. So it start to to be a big a big project, um, and also we are working on a product con configurator. Don't miss there is this year two of our talk on Chop Invader, one for the PIM and one for Fourth Flow that uh, just after me they present uh, a product that they have done with Chop Invader. And I'm really, really happy that uh, there is a free talk on shopping right there this year. It's something really great. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was a brilliant talk and uh, a very good, uh, interesting development on Shop Invader as well. So well done on that. Any questions, we are happy to answer here while Hector is preparing for his next talk, which is on Shop Invader as well. Hey, Hector. Um, any Hi. questions, please send them through and uh, we'll ask Sebastian to answer. One of the question which was there, um, and I did probably, you did probably answer this. Um, could you explain the context of building Shop Invader? Why not use the standard e-commerce? Why not interconnect with another existing e-commerce? I, I did answer that yes, probably the presentation um, by that time wasn't fully complete. So um, I think that's answered already in the presentation, Sebastian. Any additional comments on that? Um, I think if, if you want, if you hesitate between choosing native Odoo or Shop Invader, you don't have to see these two products like a competitor. If you really do a small project where the business is not uh, only focused on the e-commerce, but mostly you, you sell by yourself and you only need a small e-commerce, then you can use Odoo if you have a small e-commerce. But if your business is 100% on pure e-commerce, you're a really e-commerce player, and then you should have something really serious and, and strong. And in that case, Shopping Rider is the right tool for, for doing this. Perfect. Another question there is, in the patent import, do yeah. you support create or update, especially for one to many? For an example, can you import the same sales order twice to update the quantities on the line, or will it add more lines, as with normal Odoo import? Yeah. If you... With the, the pattern import, for example, on one too many, you can, uh, for example, if you want to import um, uh, contact on your, your customer, you can, you will add several columns for all of your contacts you want to add. And you can, for example, match on a key. So if you want to uh, uh, match, on, for example, on the email or match on the, um, the uh, for, for email or another key, you can, if you have a key on the minute one to, to, to match, you can update the minute one uh, selected. <laughs> so it can update or create new one. It depends on the hashtag key you have. Uh, Perfect. And Carlos has also asked, and I would say this is probably the last question before we take a quick break. Um, Carlos has asked, can you see some example using Shop Invader? Are there websites which uh, are using Shop Invaders? Yeah, I can give you a... Uh, you want to, uh, well, I can send some link here or um, either or probably put them in the chat or otherwise uh, yes um, okay. well, I think if there is a for example this, uh, a bit there. Mm -hmm. this is one of Axon I can, I can give you a list of uh, projects mm -hmm. I can, if, uh, we'll probably uh, uh, Sebastian what you can do is probably later on type them into the chat and yeah. people will be able to click on okay. them um one more which has come in quickly and I will probably take it. What is the possibility of linking with label creation software? I would say that's a feature of Odoo in general, not specific for Shop Invader. Um, you can integrate Odoo with label creation software. So I would say special, not specific for Shop Invader. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, it's not specific, but uh, for example, in France, we are, we are working on a generic Python lib mm -hmm. that supports several career. It's uh, Roulier, the Roulier, Roulier is a project, and it's uh, 
we can, and I think if you pay, if, if it's, the person is interesting, but uh, generating label, you can take a look on this. You have a generic module on the side, then all of the logic is in Python lib, so you can Perfect. reuse it between the different versions. Perfect. Thank you, Sebastian. Fantastic talk.